Hello, Mark here with the Exiles. Hope you're safe and well. Um, over the summer, I did um, a video called uh, Rundell Dagger uh, FAQs. And the reason why I did that video is because um, I found myself answering the same questions over and over and over again for uh, over the years, yeah? And this video is basically the same. So I don't want this to come across as a rant or anything, but this is just, I tend to get a lot of questions or see a lot of questions or see a lot of people arguing and debating about grabbing hold of sharp long swords okay so this video is literally just so i can point people at it for my view without having to constantly repeat myself the top and bottom of it is is absolutely demonstrably fine to grab a hold of a sharp weapon whether or not it's your own or your opponent's it's irrelevant the the main thing to remember is how you grab the weapon okay and when and what you do with it okay so let's start from the perspective of your own weapon to start off with, okay? So in the works of Fury, uh, as I've said countless times and in other videos, I've even done drills where you're, you're holding a sword and you're swapping it around to, you know, um, it's absolutely fine. No matter how this sword is designed, if it's sharp from, from uh, strong to punter, you know, it's absolutely fine to grab a hold of your own weapon. Okay, and he shows this, okay? He shows it being used like this, half sword in. He shows it being used like this, like an ax sword, no problem, okay? The reason why it's fine to grab a hold of it, and we will do, it won't be me, it'll be Mark Lancaster probably, but we will do a video talking about how sharp a sword of the period actually was. I think there's a lot of misconceptions about how sharp these things actually were. But it's absolutely fine to grab a hold of your own weapon, okay? Because I'm not letting that weapon travel between my fingers and my palm, okay? If I'm thrusting with it, this is giving me, this is steering, basically, yeah? If I'm half sorted, this is steering, okay? And it's the backhand that's doing all of the powering. And there's, there's nothing to say I can't let go if I'm feeling some resistance or whatever. Even still, um, you know, it's it's um, you know it's no problem. I saw there was a video a couple of weeks ago from a colleague um, doing Fury and he was doing a cutting drill and lo and behold, someone come along and said, oh, you could never do that with a sharp sword. You'd cut your palm and I wouldn't do it without gloves and so on and so forth. And this is a good example of what I mean. Um, it's absolutely fine to grab a hold of your own weapon. It just really matters how you grab a hold of your own weapon. Um, you know, there are examples of weapons where they weren't sharp until the very last bit, so all of this was kind of blunt-ish. So that, you know, is an added safety precaution. There are examples of weapons with little cutouts towards the end, specifically to, to help with securing the grip on the weapon. Um, but even still, uh, you know, I've done my time with sharps, um, I've test cutted with them, all the rest of it. Uh, I've never had an issue. I've transitioned the things, I've used them like this, no problem. It's no problem to grab a hold of it, as long as you know how and what you're doing, okay? The next element with regards to your own weapon, this is something that a lot of people experience for the first time when they start doing test cutting with sharps, okay? When we're practicing with our blunt weapons, we're not too concerned with where that weapon goes, okay? So if we take up a poster, yeah, we will throw it up on the shoulder and we'll, and sometimes, although this is biomechanically incorrect, they will cut off the shoulder as well, okay? Now with a blunt, that's no problem. You can get away with that, okay? Quite often when people start test cutting with sharps and they, they go up to a poster, they're very tentative. They're suddenly very aware of the fact that they're putting a very sharp weapon, modern sharp weapon, against their shoulder, against their neck, and so on and so forth, okay? In reality, you obviously want to have a bit of caution when you're throwing a sharp up back into poster, okay? Because you, you might get little cuts and you don't want anything up against the neck or anything like that. In practice though, you know, Again, I've done this test cut in sharps, I've practiced with them in the living room, whatever. It's, it's not a big deal, okay? Once you're aware of the fact that it's sharp, you tend to just drop it onto the shoulder a little bit more gently. And you can't stop this, right? If you're, if you're operating, if you're, if you're, you know, doing this for real, then you're gonna need to snap up into your posture. You know, they're going to make contact. They're going to make contact against your body, okay? As long as you're conscious of the fact, and obviously it depends on what you're wearing, as long as you're conscious of the fact that it's sharp and you start to build that into your training, then, you know, it's, it's not a big deal. Okay, next bit is grabbing hold of your opponent's weapon. Well, there's some things about this. The first thing I want to say is I've, I've seen this absolutely loads, even before the Facebook groups and you know, big discussions on the old sword forum and that in the early 2000s, 
Well, people describing actions around how they grab their opponent's weapon. And the best one ever is people saying that they don't allow the opponent's weapon to come in contact with the palm of their hand. So they basically grab it like this, yeah, like that, but between the fingers and the palm. So it's gonna be very hard to show you on camera, but they're basically suggesting that they will grab the sword like this, yeah, without letting the weapon actually come in contact with the palm of their hand. I absolutely do not buy that. Yeah, there's no way anybody's got the finesse to reach out and grab a weapon, the opponent's weapon, and have the finesse and the motor function to basically grab it between the finger and the palm to not let the blade come in contact with the actual hand itself. I don't think anybody at speed, under pressure, has got that level of coordination. Fury tells us how to grab someone's short sword. He shows us, okay? When we first see it in the, in the Largo section, he makes this shape with his arm here. The reason why he makes this shape here, he's come to, he's come to uh, in Crusada and he's reached up and he's grabbed their weapon. The reason why he makes this shape with his arm is to give him a bit of give, okay? Because if the opponent's cut out and decides that they want their sword back, they're going to do this, okay? They're gonna pull it back, okay? If, especially if you've grabbed a hold of it, yeah? They're gonna use their strength, they're gonna pull it back. So by making this shape, it gives you that time to let go. And I've just I've described this in a, in a previous video. That being said, you're not just grabbing a hold of it and basically keeping it there, okay? When we walk through this technique, we will grab it and we'll focus on this hand, okay? And I, and I do exactly the same. To play the technique out properly, and I'm using this as an example, you'll cut in, you'll grab a hold of it, but you'll take it somewhere, okay? You'll, you'll take the weapon down. And you're only, you're only doing that for a second before you're sticking, you know, 25 inches of your own sword down their neck. So it's absolutely fine to grab a hold of your opponent's sword as long as you're doing it in the right way. The main thing for me is that you're you're moving that weapon somewhere where it's going to be very difficult for the opponent to pull it back. Okay, in this case, just straight down. Okay, but it's absolutely fine to grab a hold of your opponent's weapon if it's sharp, as long as you're doing it in the right way, and as long as you're not spending ages grab, you know, with that weapon, without a second point of cover, without the ability to move around with it. Um, if you're just trying to grab it, and they're, you, you know, they're fully extended, and they're pulling it back, and you're completely locked out, then obviously that sword is gonna rub against the inside of your hand and possibly cut you. The main aspect for me is irrelevant of whether or not I'm going to get my hand cut. If I'm thinking of this system in its original context, and I'm unfortunate in, I mean, even Fury says he wore gloves when he was fought unarmored. But if you, if you don't have gloves on, and you have to grab your opponent's sword to give you an opening to thrust them or whatever, then you're gonna do it, okay? So it doesn't invalidate our training when we say, you know, oh, I can't grab a hold of it because I haven't got gloves on. You grab a hold of it, okay? Because I would rather take a cut across the palm of my hand and win and live than worry about my hand. And that, that correlates with training as well. I'm not gonna not train something because I may or may not have gloves on. Ideally, I would, and then none of this is really an issue. But it, you shouldn't limit your training because of the modern mentality of, oh, I wouldn't do that, I'd get my hand cut. Rubbish, you're trying to kill each other. So that's the ultimate thing for me. I'll grab a hold of a weapon if I live. Um, so, like I say, uh, this video is really just to point people back to it. It's very hard, again, to show, you know, I'm solo during this lockdown, I can't give you examples of when I grabbed the sword and how I grabbed the sword, but it's demonstrably fine to grab a hold of your own weapon, regardless of how sharp a modern sword is, and that modern being the, the critical word here, it doesn't matter. It's how you use it and the practice that you, you put into moving this thing around whilst minimising the risk, and similarly grabbing an opponent's sword. If you're doing it in the right way, um, then the risk is minimal and it shouldn't limit your training because it might be a risk if you're looking at applying your system you know within the context of, of how it's supposed to be applied so that's that thank you for your time I'm sorry it come across as a bit of a rant it really wasn't supposed to be um, and uh, until the next one